It is so exciting to be here and to worship with all of you on this Father's Day. Um, I am so glad that you all are here. Um, I have a really exciting announcement. I was going to wait for the uh, the joys um, and celebrations, but some news is just too good to wait. Uh, Colton and Katie had their baby June 14th. A boy, Hudson Edward, 6 pounds, 4 ounces, 19 inches, and they are both doing fantastic. And they came home yesterday, so what good news is that? Um, we had our Synod Assembly this week. Amy, Lauren, and I represented our congregation. Let me tell you, it is so exciting to be in a place with over 600 other Lutherans sharing stories, getting re-energized, and coming back full of ideas and an inspiration. And Amy was planning to come and share um, her experiences with Synod Assembly, but as you can tell, I'm a little raspy this morning. We think it's the air quality, because I've just had like this incessant tickle that just um, isn't leaving, um, and I'm just feeling the air quality is not the great. Um, we think she's that's what she's struggling with. So she's staying home today to uh, rest her vocal cords. She says she's really scratchy. And so and she's supposed to read today too. So um, Pete is Amy Lauren today. So. <laughs> um, and she will share her experiences at a later time. Are there any community announcements or concerns we need to be made aware of at this time? Yes. I just want to let everybody know that my husband is celebrating a life. He'll be sad. He's 24 from 13 side tracks. Where is side tracks? Side tracks. Downtown Gilford. Yes. What did she say? My husband's. Uh, Celebration of Life will be at Sidetracks from 1 to 3 on Saturday. And we've got the, the graveside um, at the cemetery of releasing his ashes that day too. So, yes. All right. If there are no other announcements, let us begin our worship this morning as we confess our need for God. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that, while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve, <laughs> these twelve, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it, if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. 
and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not for you, for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. <clears throat> Siblings in Christ, this is indeed the gospel, the good news of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And we do have children. Are they willing to come forward for a children's message? Yay! <laughs> We can tell it'd be my first Sunday event because this doesn't have anything to do with what we went <laughs> But maybe that's good because the end of it sounded kind of bleak. <laughs> I have a little game and this is called Tell Which One is Different Than the Others. What do you think? I see a hamburger and a hot dog and an ice cream. Which doesn't belong? The ice cream. Yeah, the other two are sandwiches. Okay, and I have in this picture a donkey, a little doggy, and a, a dolphin. dolphin, I think, yeah. Which one doesn't belong? Dolphin. You're right! A dolphin doesn't belong. Now I've got three pictures. And what are they? What are these people? Are they moms? Yeah, you can tell that they all have babies. If you might look at it and say, well, they all belong. And then you say, well, maybe not. This could be a grandma. You know what? It isn't. It was a mom. And this story is about God keeping his promises. Sarah wanted a baby very, very much. And when she was getting so old, she thought, I'll never have a baby. But guess what? She did, because God had promised her that he would send her a child. And so she was a mom too, even though she was about 100 years old. Wow. wow. Our story today is about God keeping his promises. Let's pray. Dear Lord, help us to trust in you that you will always keep your promises. Amen. I'm just so excited. They feel so brave to come forward. <laughs> Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. In today's Gospel reading, we hear uh, Jesus sending out his 12 disciples. He sends them, names them, and gives them very clear instructions on what they are to do. That they are to heal, they are to bless, they are to cast out demons, they are to uh, take a very meager uh, bag with them. Uh, I, I can't, I, I'm just trying to picture this. See, next Monday, Trace and I are packing up to go um, camping three nights in the Porcupine Mountains. We did this last year, and we hiked two miles to our cabin. No electricity, no running water. There is a compost toilet, thank heavens. Um, <laughs> but 
we have to haul everything with us. And so we want to make sure that we're really prepared, you know, beyond your first aid kit and um, our water. And, and I've learned this time because we hauled too much water and our packs were too heavy and it made our trip even more challenging. Um, so this time we're just going to take enough for our hike in because we have water, water filters and um, what's called a life straw and we're going to boil our water and also use the filter system for while we're out there. But, you know, you think of all the precautions and wanting to be prepared to, you know, last week um, Heidi's very close to where they're camping and at, at her summer camp and they did not get out of the 50 degree temperatures all, all week long. Except for yesterday, they hit 80 degrees and they're like, it's so hot out. And I just like, <laughs> <laughs> um, And so they were, were dealing with, you know, cooler temperatures and, you know, it wasn't warm enough to swim and all that. So, you know, I'm like, well, one day I could have a day in the 40s and the next day I'm going to have a day in the 80s. Do, I'm going to have to bring stuff for both, you know, trying to be prepared. And so, um, Thinking of being prepared and what you need to bring um, with Jesus' instructions is, is a little daunting. Uh, he also uh, shares with his disciples um, how he, they are to enter the village um, and how are, they are to encounter. And he also made it very clear that this ministry uh, that they're being sent to is not to the Gentiles. They are going strictly to the chosen people of Israel. So people that they are familiar with, who are like them. And they're being told, prepare. Not everyone's going to like what you have to say. And um, it's not going to be a very pleasant experience at times. And Jesus helped them set their expectations of, of what to expect on this trip. And he also reminds them, though, that they're never going through this alone. That God is with them. God will be their voice for them. Um, and they should seek comfort even when things get rough. That God is abiding with them. And in the end, it's all going to be okay. So what is our takeaway from this? What can we learn from this ragtag group? And here are some nuggets that I think we, as the body of Christ, can learn from this gospel text. The first is that we, like the disciples, are called. Through our baptism, God is calling us to live out our vocation in the world, proclaiming with our lives the good news of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we are loved. As uh, our second reading in Romans that uh, Pete so graciously read this morning, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Still in our brokenness. What amazing grace is this? And this is definitely a message that the world needs to hear. That they are loved, that they are cherished, that they have value, that they are of worth. Because they're not getting that message from the media. They're not getting that message from government. They're not getting that message from school. Who's going to tell them? Our scripture reading also very clearly uh, switches from Jesus summoned, summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority. And then he switches and uses the word apostle. 
apostle. Disciple and apostle. Sometimes we think of them as being synonyms. They're very similar. And often an apostle and a disciple are the same thing. A disciple is one who learns. One who is learning about Jesus and follows the way of Jesus is a disciple. Apostle means one who is sent. Jesus turns his disciples into apostles. We are disciples turned into apostles. We are sent into our world to proclaim the love of God through word and deed. Here's a moment of comfort when we look around our church. Now today, I'm not, I think our numbers are still fairly good. The, the Bean family, you're helping us out here because, you know, there's many who are missing that are often here. But I know we have memories of when our pews were fuller. I know we have memories, a lot of them are, are, are elderly now. They've either passed away or they're just not able to come. Some have moved away. Um, and we just, we know that um, our numbers are not what they've been in the past. Now we thankfully, and I think it's because of our blessing of small numbers, we bounced back fairly well after the pandemic, but a lot of congregations are dealing with their attendance numbers have just not rebounded. And that's not just the Lutheran Church, that's mainstream Christianity. Those numbers just haven't bounced back. Here's the good news, folks. Jesus didn't call people to come into our building. He called us in this building to go out into the world. So the people that we witness to, the people that we share the good news with, are not the people that are in our pews. They're, they're out there. And they might never come in here. I would love it if they could. And perhaps through your engagement with your life and sharing the, how much they are loved, they might end up here. But our overall goal isn't how many people we can fill the pews. I know that's something we would love. Almost any congregation that you go to, you're going to hear, oh, I just wish. Because we know that we as the body of Christ, we've got something really worthwhile to share. And we don't want people missing out. But they're not going to come here. Oftentimes, um, and I've heard it more in people in, in Jamie's church because there's, we're getting generations and, of people who have never walked into a sanctuary. And um, my husband has had several people that he's met in the Monmouth community and they know he's a pastor and stuff and, and they've said, can anyone just show up on Sunday morning or, or do you have to be a member or, or you know, uh, they don't know the, the etiquette, uh, the, that, you know, when we say all are welcome, we mean it, <laughs> um, come through our doors, um, you don't need a handwritten invitation, but that's not, um, the people who, who have not experienced the church have either experienced church trauma or have not had the experience of having a positive faith God encounter. And so, who's going to tell them? You are. By living your life through your words. Um, so we are called and we are sent. You know what else we can learn from this? We can manage our expectations. Not everyone's going to like what we have to say. Jesus tells his disciples that 
people are not going to accept you. They're going to be suspicious of you. They're going to um, persecute you. Some of them they might even put to death. That is very daunting. That might scare people away. Um, but Jesus also reminds them that they do not go alone. It doesn't say this explicitly in Matthew's Gospel, but you see it in other, um, in, in Mark's. They send them off together. They use the buddy system. That is invaluable as well. And you know what else? These disciples, you heard the background. No experience necessary. You do not have to be a trained seminary, seminary uh, trained theologian. You have what it takes to do this, to witness your faith in the world around you. Um, God will equip you. This congregation will equip you. Your synod will equip you. In fact, um, we are finding it more and more difficult because the pastors who are retiring in this area aren't really fully sticking around and it's getting harder and harder to find pulpit supply. And we are relying on our lay people to help lead worship, to to do the work of ministry. And I strongly encourage, if you feel that God is calling you to help proclaim this message, we have programs, diaconia programs. You can get them online. We will help support you. And um, we, you can um, strengthen the ministry of this church and our surrounding communities by becoming a trained lay leader in your church. And I think some of you have gifts for that. You know who you are. Um, no experience necessary. Manage your expectations. We are sent, we are called, and we are not alone. What good news is that? Those are amazing ways to lead your life. And when we get overwhelmed, this is one thing we heard at our Synod Assembly. Because sometimes, uh, and Sharon put it quite, quite clearly, sometimes the future looks kind of bleak. Uh, in our gospel lesson, you know, it, it ended kind of, uh, you know, there's gonna be some suffering. And we look at our small congregations in our rural towns and we know our rural populations are dwindling. How are we supporting ministry in this place and in other places that, um, that God is calling us to in the sparse populations? Because let me tell you, God is not just in the city. God is definitely in the country. Um, I, I know God is with farmers because they do a lot of praying. <laughs> for rain, for good crops. Um, um, what we've done in the past is going to be different than what the future is. And it is that leap of faith in the, the unknown, in the uncertainty. And we were reminded that we have been given this one big, beautiful, amazing life. What are you going to do with it? And they've made it even more specific than that. You've been given one big, beautiful, amazing life. What are you going to do with it today? Because tomorrow has not yet come. How are you making your mark today? How are you living that out today? How is God working in you today? How are you being called and being sent today? This is the power of the church. This is the power of what it means to be one body in Christ, 
working together to share this amazing grace with our desperately needing world. Amen. Restore lands ruined by pollution or misuse. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who govern, we pray. Empower those who seek peaceful solutions to conflict and embolden those who advocate for those who are oppressed. Work through systems of government to establish justice throughout the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abandoned. Embrace any who long for successful treatment for mental illness or freedom from addiction. Heal those who are sick. 
especially Betty, Jeanette, Dennis, Georgia, Linda, Chuck, Jeremy, Wanda, Carrie, Nancy, Ted, Sharon, Carl and Doreen, Caroline and Barb. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For fathers and father figures, we pray. Console all who long to be fathers, children estranged from their fathers, anyone grieving the death of a father, and fathers who have lost a child. Draw near to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the saints, we give thanks. Receive into your eternal care all who have died, and fill us with hope that does not disappoint. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us take a moment and share God's peace with those around us. God's peace be with you, everyone. Peace, neighbor. Our giving is an act of worship, and at this time we receive our offering. Christ, 
who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. There is a place for you.
Please rise. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. What further joys and celebrations do we have today? Sarah Nelson celebrates her birthday today. And I do believe that they do watch online, so we'll, we'll sing to Sarah. Yes. She would be the only one. All right, Sarah, this is for you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. As you can tell in your bulletin as well, um, we were planning June 25th to have an uh, all-conference uh, Earth Church worship experience. Um, June 25th tended to get piled on with so many community activities um, that the conference looked to see what is going to be best for most of the communities that our conference serves. And it's been pushed back to October 1st, which is a Sunday. It's still going to be out at um, one of the shelters at um, Story Lake Story. And um, it's no longer really potluck. The conference will be providing pool pork sandwiches. And people are encouraged to bring desserts that don't need to have forks or spoons. So <laughs> cookies, bars, that, those types of things. Um, and this is really a, a way for, uh, for us to get to know who our partners are in ministry. Um, so uh, I'm really hoping, um, I'm hoping that it is a favorable time for farmers. I know you might be out in the field, um, and I don't know what to pray for, because <laughs> if you're not out in the field, that might not be a good thing. So I, I hope it is favorable in a good way that you can join us. <laughs> Um, but we um, know that that is, um, no matter what time of year, in the winter it's too cold, in spring, you know, um, you've got all the uh, school end of the year stuff, you Easter lands, you know, summer people, you know, so we just have to kind of just pick something and go with it and, and pray that it is going to work out for everyone. So um, please just mark your calendar and I, I hope you can join us. With that, um, receive your blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks to the, in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. 